The royal court has announced that His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa will pay a visit to Moscow tomorrow, Monday, during which His Majesty will hold talks with President of the Russian Federation Vladimir Putin on the standing relations between the two countries and prospects of enhancing them in various domains, in addition to regional and international developments. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Qudibiya Palace today. Senior members of the royal family, intellectuals, media figures, businessmen, state officials and scores of citizens discussing with them regional and international issues. His Royal Highness called on GCC citizens to be cautious and vigilant against plots targeting the security and stability of their countries and to remain united in facing evil plots, voicing trust that GCC leaders are capable of safeguarding their countries and maintaining their hard-won achievements thanks to their wisdom and unified stances. He said past Arab nation experiences are difficult lessons that must be learned from to help strengthen cooperation and joint action and boost security and stability. He also praised the awareness and creativity enjoyed by the people of Bahrain, as well as their achievements on the regional and international levels, affirming Bahrainis are aware of their surroundings and are considered role models in loyalty and patriotism. The Prime Minister stressed his personal interest and keenness to communicate with citizens and follow up on their needs in all areas across the Kingdom, directing all concerned government bodies to speed up resolving difficulties encountered by citizens. He underlined the role played by journalists and writers in presenting and analysing local and international issues. His Royal Highness also valued the role played by Saudi Arabia in defending the security and stability of the Arab and Islamic nations and its remarkable efforts in serving pilgrims and ensuring the success of the Hajj season. He called on pilgrims to abide by the rules and regulations set by Saudi Arabia in order to perform Hajj peacefully. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired a meeting today in which he approved a development project supporting tourism infrastructure in Muharraq. The project, which costs are reaching 45 million Bahraini dinars, links Muharraq Souk to a modern waterfront through a, bridge, a footbridge and includes services and facilities such as a hotel with multi-storey car park and cafes and restaurants, all of which support tourism in the city of Muharraq. The project is in line with His Royal Highness's directive to increase development projects that boost commerce and tourism in Muharraq. He listened to detailed technical explanation about the project, presented by Deputy Prime Minister, Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Reconstruction and Infrastructure, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. The Prime Minister stressed the government places great importance on executing vital and development projects that serve people and reinforce government efforts in developing tourism in the various areas in Bahrain, especially Muharraq, for its rich historical and cultural heritage. He also directed obtaining public tenders for the project as soon as possible.
Under the patronage of the Minister of Health, Dr. Faiq Al Saleh, a playroom dedicated to the Children's Oncology Ward is inaugurated, was inaugurated today. More in this report with Sarah Al Bureh. Silmania Medical Complex has now a beautifully constructed playroom with a glass roof for sunlight exposure. The playroom's important lays in the normal developmental needs of children. It promotes learning, growth and development. It also provides relaxation, fun and especially socialization. We are I mean, very happy that excited that we have uh, such a room for the children that they are suffering from the cancer disease. Uh, this room is uh, considered as educational room for uh, all the children who are at the Salmania Hospital. And we, I mean, uh, we are thankful for uh, all the people that uh, Omnia Tofel, that uh, they uh, provided this, uh, such a room. And we hope that they will get benefit from this because it's a matter of a psychological uh, issue that for the children, all the patients, not only the children, uh, if you don't treat them uh, as a psychological uh, uh, taking care of them, uh, may maybe they will uh, be uh, f uh, feeling, I mean, suffering a lot. The room was there, but it's just a, a little bit of renovating the, uh, the toys and having a new extension to allow the sunshine for, sunshine for, the, for the kids, especially when they are treating themselves as at, at home and uh, missing, missing the playing time in the, at the park. So it's, it's really a pleasant um, to see everybody's happy, happy today with the great changes here. When children are sick in the hospital, their usual routines are disrupted and they may be separated from their families and other familiar people for periods of time. Being able to play while in the hospital means that children can continue an aspect of their normal life. Playing time can help children become more at ease with the unfamiliar surroundings and experiences of a hospital. They also express their feelings and worries about treatments, which helps them to feel less anxious. Playing provides an opportunity for children to make choices so they can retain a sense of some control. And one of the things that affected me was uh, they had a place for kids to play in. And uh, I was there 24-7. And it really affected the way I uh, saw cancer, the way I uh, fought with cancer. I wish we had something like this from where I come from. Uh, this could be a, a good example for us, you know, to start working on. So for me, what treated me was, uh, uh, it was uh, the mental ability. And the mental ability came when I started recognizing myself, which is through playing Sony, playing uh, billiards and all these stuff. Coming to the hospital is never a happy occasion. It's either visiting someone sick or it's either being sick themselves. But for children, it's even worse, especially those receiving chemotherapy here almost on a daily basis. But this little project from Child Wish Foundation or Society has made it possible for the children to have a place in the hospital for them to have fun and feel good in. This is Sarah Burek for Bahrain 55. Education Minister Dr. Majid Al Naimi went on a field visit to public schools in different governorates, where he met members of the educational and administrative panels in their first day back to school with the start of the academic new year. While the minister made sure work was up to standard, he commended the effective role of the educators, particularly teachers, as they are the core of the educational process. He affirmed the ministry works to develop the educational environment every year through creating a comfortable ambiance that enhances the school's performance and work cycle. He stated the reason behind setting an earlier date for teachers and administrators to get back to school than students is to prepare an appropriate environment for the students, design and distribute teachers' schedules and hold preparatory meetings and workshops. Dr. Al Naimi pointed out that the ministry, under the wise leadership, has finished preparing for the new academic year. It is now ready to receive 140,000 students, 10,000 of which are new, in 208 schools, as well as 18,000 teachers and administrators. Minister of Labour and Social Development and Chairman of the Health and Vocational Safety Council, Jamil bin Mohammed Al-Humaydan, Ali Humaydan announced the noon 
outdoor work ban for this summer has been remarkably successful. He said that 98.9% of the concerned companies and establishments complied with the rule. The bans forcing labourers to work under the scorching heat of the summer sun from noon till 4pm. He said the unprecedented compliance rate is the fruitful outcome of the leadership's keenness on ensuring the health and safety of workers. The minister added that compliance rates of the concerned sites indicates their keenness to protect workers and ensure their safety, which he said reflects the respect of human rights culture prevailing in the kingdom. He explained that the Labour Ministry's specialised team made regular surprise inspection visits to 10,053 work sites during the ban and reported 106 violations, adding that 235 workers were victims. The penalty inflicted on violators is a jail term not exceeding three months and or 500 to 1,000 Bahraini dinar fine.